Welcome to the Beck and Siri Show. And here at Team Series Tri Club, it's not just about swim, bike, run. It's about who you become. On our show, we don't just talk to you about swimming, cycling, and running. We talk about mindset. We talk about fearless authenticity and being your very best self. Hey, this is Ashley from Team Serious. On this episode, Beck and Siri discuss a variety of topics, including performance metrics, how to plan your weekly training sessions, and more. Enjoy. So, hopefully a couple people joined, but we're going to record this so people can watch it. We have Carrie is... Yay! I have that. Carrie Preston! Hello! Yeah. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Team Serious live chat. We have Megan and Carrie on already. We're also... Recording on Clubhouse. I hope you're all having an amazing start to your week. Um, we are excited to answer some questions for you all. Martin's on. Hi, Martin. Welcome to Clubhouse. Um, those of you on Facebook, welcome. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Um, some great training where you celebrated you, celebrated your fitness, celebrated this miracle of life which it most certainly is. So questions, guys. So we have a couple of questions just to start with. Um, let's see what they are. So this is our first time on Clubhouse if you're just joining. So thanks, guys, for joining us on here. Um, this is great because the audio is saved, so we can then upload it for our live chat. So hi, Bertha. Hi, Janet. Hi, Karen. Karen, you got some good press last night at Business Mastery. Beck was talking about how oh, go, yeah. she's grown our business to such an amazing level. I'm so very proud of her. And you know um, what? They showed the slide of Karen's um, quote. Yeah, that's what I'm it. saying. Yeah. yeah, an amazing quote from you. And actually, we built this together. I'm not going to give her all the credit. But Karen, you are up there. And an amazing quote from you, which inspired so which many Which was people. that she couldn't swim one lap over a year ago and now she swims four kilometers easily. yeah amazing yeah. so people were like wow this karen goble she's amazing and my wife did an incredible job she made me so proud and she would have made all of you proud if you saw her as well because it's all about putting your heart into your business loving your clients and truly you know having them feel like family and and that's what we've done here all right, so we have a question, Siri, from Trisha Robinson. She's asking, I'm looking to get my first tri bike. I am still relatively new to triathlon. First one I completed in 2019, and I'm signed up for the 70.3 in June. What are your thoughts? She's added this one, and it is a Cervelo. I do love Cervelos, but I, I have love to say Cervelo, that yeah. we are sponsored and partnered with Quintana Roo. So they are our they're our team, they're our partners, and they do amazing discounts incredible. for our club. So you guys get 25 to 30% off road bikes, TT bikes. Um, the other company they have is Lightspeed, and there's another one as well, a third one that they've merged with. So Siri Road QR when she was with us, Lightspeed then. Yeah, Lightspeed. And they're amazing bikes. So, of course, you can get an incredible deal using your Team Sirius tri uh, discount. Um, to get an amazing Quintana Roo or light speed bike. So, but Cervelos are great as well. So if that's what you have your eye on and your heart set on, then well, let's look at this Siri because what she's mentioned here is a road bike, um, and she is planning to do a 7.3. We have like quite a bit of information we can give you here because you're saying you did your first one in 2009. I'm assuming that was maybe a triathlon. I'm not sure what distance, but you're doing 7.3. So let's talk real quick because. Um, there are options to, if you're used to a road bike, it's very good for bike handling. We talked about this last week, but you can always put tri bars on that. Um, but if you are planning to do the longer distances, that's where your heart is and you can do several of them. It would be worthwhile trying with the tri bars, but a time trial bike is always more comfortable. So if you're going to invest in a bike and you had one choice, I would be going with, if it's going to be the non-drafting 70.3 on Ironman, I would definitely go with um, a time trial bike. Yeah, I fun. totally agree, Tricia. So... Depending on, are you planning on just doing one long distance uh, triathlon and a lot of road biking? Because if that's the case, then a road bike would be fine for that one event. But if this is something you want to do more of in the future, definitely getting a time trial bike will be key. Yeah. And Janet, there we go. Janet Dixon is one of our amazing team members, and she said she simply loves the QR. I love the bike, and my previous bike was a Cervelo. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight too. But there you go. Hopefully that helps, Trisha. Um, do you guys see some blood running down my arm? That was really silly. I Epic fail and, like, rookie error, walking out with alfalfa in your hands, two flakes, when there's, like, five horses and mud, and they all just charge me. And one grabbed the alfalfa. Not on purpose, you guys. No, they grabbed it's they, very muddy. 
They didn't mean to bite me. They were grabbing the alfalfa and got my arm instead. <laughs> But don't worry, we've cleaned it up. It just looks looks yeah, not it looks a lot so worse good. than it is. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're both wearing our horse shirts. How so that? Trisha says, my long term goal is to do a full distance Ironman. Trisha, I would go with mm -hmm. a time trial bike for sure. Um, it's just so much better suited for longer triathlons and faster. And it's comfortable. It's fast. Check out the QRs before you commit. Bertha has one. I think about 10 guys got them last year. And it, we do get the most unbelievable discount. You are not going to get that bike for that quality for what you want with a discount with like Ace or they don't even call that anymore, DI2 or Ultegra. You're not going to get that for the value that we get with the 25 to 30% off. So, And the key is, Trisha, that you want to be comfortable. So when you're looking for any new bike, um, make sure that you get set up on it and that you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to tell you you've got to get as aero as possible. You've got to save this amount of time with uh, this angle on your aero bars. No, it's all about being comfortable because if you're not comfortable, you're not going to be able to access your power. And most likely you'll be so uncomfortable getting off the bike that it's going to be hard to run. So comfort is key. Okay. You want to make sure whatever bike you buy, you get a uh, bike fit on and that you are comfortable and you feel confident that you can stay in that position for say three, four, five hours time. Six to eight hours. Yeah. yeah. So um, also Brianna Hurley, Brianna Hurley is our rep. Um, she, her dad owns the company and Brianna is in this Facebook group. So you can reach out to her. I can give you her email. She, everyone individually works out the best fit for them, the best bike for them, the best option. And with Cervelo, I must say they are a little higher price than QR, but it doesn't mean they're faster or better. So price wise, if you're worrying about overpaying, um, you're not going to overpay with QR. So yeah. Awesome. And you get the discount. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. So how exciting, Trisha. Um, we can't wait to hear how your um, bike buying process goes. And um, is there a link to our QR rep? Her name is Brianna Hurley. And I will send you her email. Yeah. I can actually type it in here. Real well, I don't know if I know it off by heart. I probably can't type it in here right now. But um, connect with me, Team Series Tri Club at gmail.com. And I will connect you with Brianna straight away for sure. Or you could tag her in a post. She will set it up for you. Um, okay, Janet Dixon, who is on here? Yay, we have a question from Janet. Remember, guys, we're only here for like 30, 40 minutes. So please write your questions because you've got to have more than a couple. Like, please write them up right now. Um, if you have one and you're on Clubhouse, let us know and we'll invite you into the room and you can ask a question live too. So Yeah, and there are no silly questions, guys. Remember, both Beck and I, when we began triathlon, we knew nothing. I knew nothing. I didn't know how to swim. I didn't even really know how to float. So there are no questions that are silly, mm -hmm. okay? Our goal is to have you feel totally comfortable and confident, and sometimes those are questions that may seem silly to you, but they're not. They're important things that we didn't know either, and we had to learn in order to get where we both, uh, to, to where we, we both are. achieved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to go through our beginner mindset, we call it sometimes, because we just, we forget what we didn't know when we started. I talked about that last night, actually, on the stage. It, um, business mastery that you have to sort of go back and remember what did I not know when I was starting I didn't know anything I need there's a lot of things we need to know what bike to use what works to do how to rack your bike how to get on your bike how to breathe while you're swimming not just how to get two extra watts in a 40k time trial in aerodynamic position like so we ourselves sometimes find ourselves we need to remember to go back to that so it's really important and Ash is on Ash is for you guys who don't know Ashley Steves and her wife Karen Karen Steves is coached by Mel Mitchell She's amazing, and Ash is our new business business development manager, and she's amazing. Um, she's been taking over Cam's role while we're still using training um, peak, training tilt, sorry. Um, but Cameron's going to work on his own his own business. So Ash has just been amazing. So thank you, Ashley, for being on and posting that email address for Brianna. That'd be awesome. So there you go. Thanks. Here's a question from Danny. I understand the concept behind using uh, rate of perceived exertion and not being tied to your heart rate and power in training. Do you feel that rate of perceived exertion is still best in a 70.3 or full distance, or should we watch numbers during a race so we can uh, That is a great question. Amazing. Thank you for asking that. Amazing question, Danny. It is even more important. Take it away, Siri. Even more important in a 70.3 and even more important in a full distance. Okay, so you oh, where have do we to, start? Such a great question. You have to have faith and trust in your body, and the more you train with rate of perceived exertion, you will know. You will know. And, and if you're on any of our training plans, 
we give you time trial efforts, you know, at Ironman perceived effort. And the way I explain that is push as you would. If you were racing 180K bike today, how hard would you go? And it's always going to be a little bit of a risk, mm -hmm. okay? But you're going to be more likely to probably not go as hard as you can than go harder than you can. Because the fact of the matter is that if we go harder than we think we can, first of all, we are capable of so much more than we think that we are. Mm -hmm. And when we are going harder than we think we can, we're most likely, you know, doing things that give us a lot of energy and momentum, like, wow, I'm catching all these people. And that adrenaline will carry you through. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a long distance race and it's hot and, you know, you might be a bit dehydrated and, you know, your heart rate monitor is reading funny because it's not working properly in the extreme heat or whatever it is, like that is going to put you in a constant state of judgment. Am I good enough or am I not good enough in this moment? And most of the time, because going into a big race, you tapered and you've gotten yourself in a position to race your best race, your power numbers are going to be higher than they normally are. Your heart rate might be lower than it normally is going at a certain speed. And that's because your body is ready for that kind of effort. But if you're, if you've got your power meter there and you're like, oh my God, this is too hard. This is too hard, even though it feels totally fine. You're then limiting what you're capable of on that day. So heart rate and power meter. I mean, my athletes now keep in, keep in uh, mind, Miranda Carfrey won three three Ironman World Championships. Leanda Cave won one Ironman World Championship. Both of them won a 70.3 World Championship. And she has two Olympic medals, bronze and silver. Well, no she power meters. meters. She coached athletes yeah. to them. No power meters, no heart rate monitors. And I'll tell this story again because I love this story. Training Peaks wanted to see <laughs> Miranda Carfrey's power file after I think it was a 2013 world championships and they saw that and they got back to me and they're like, wow, this file is just perfect. Literally perfect. Like you can see why she won this race. It's perfect. And they said, tell us about how you use power in your training because this is brilliant. And I said, we never use power in our training. We never look at it. I, I look at it, but she never looks at it until after during the race any race she just has it on cadence okay she wanted to keep her 83 cadence because that's where she rode most powerfully she went by purely on perceived effort and she had a training file that training peak said was one of the best files they've ever seen at the <laughs> ironman world championships and that came from training solely with rate of perceived exertion so guys the proof is in the pudding I've been coaching now for 25 years and we've had such tremendous results, never used gadgets. Brett Sutton, he has coached multiple world champions and, and Olympians, never uses gadgets. You just have to trust in you and you will know your body. You will know yourself so much better if you're not using numbers to tell you whether you're worthy, whether you're strong enough, whether you're fit enough. You're just going off of what you feel inside. And that connection you have with yourself is going to serve you not only with the performances, but it will keep you from getting injured. Okay. It'll keep you healthy. And most importantly, it will keep you happy and feeling fulfilled. So trust in it. You've got to condition it. You've got to get used to it. You have to understand that as you get fitter, you're going to be going faster. Can I touch something? Yeah. So I to that exactly. So a lot of the time, guys come with us and say, "Oh, my FTP is three watts per kilo, whatever." I'm like, "Oh, that's great. It's good to know that, and maybe measure it once a year." But the problem is when you, the good thing when you come to us is that we have training sessions that are tried and tested with 50 years combined experience in high performance training, and racing, Siri and I. So we know what workouts it takes, and people think we're crazy because we give you workouts that Olympic distance athletes would do. This is our secret source. We give you workouts at half Ironman, Ironman. And that's when I came to see the big game changer for me, different to Brett, why she was so good at what she did was she was able to do every type of workout. So you're improving your high end aerobic capacity, your, your endurance, your speed. Um, they're saying, why do you do turnovers as an Ironman athlete? Because you want leg speed cadence. That's always going to help you as a runner. Runners do it. So there's so many things. And you're going to find after even one month, 
some of those numbers are going to change really quickly. So your FTP will be way higher, but you're still gauging yourself off. Oh, yeah, but it's three watts per kilo. So I'm 140 heart rate. So, oh, I don't want to go higher than that. But no, without training, I can guarantee you after a couple of weeks, if not a few months, all those numbers are out the door because they're all different. They're higher. Your anaerobic threshold's higher. Your VO2 is higher. And you just, like Siri said, we judge ourselves enough. Like we're judged constantly by public opinion and in social media and everywhere. So why just, no, don't you judge yourself in training. Like there's enough judgment out there. So I just awesome. wanted to add that too. It's so awesome. Important. Yeah. And the other thing too about blowing up. Here's the misconception. Mm -hmm. I used to blow up multiple times <laughs> in every single Did you race. blow up at the World Champs? Oh, I blew up all the she time. She came out last, so she must have in the So <laughs> here's the thing, you guys. People give blowing up the meaning that everything's over. Yeah. You blow up, it's over. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. You blow up, have something to drink, have a little piece of a gel, back off a little bit, and then boom, right back into it again. You can blow up multiple times in a race. My athletes in... In Ironman, in 70.3, they blow up multiple times, but a, all a blow up tells you, it's your body saying, back nope, that a was a little too hard, let's back off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's take a moment, let's settle down, and then we'll get back into a rhythm again. So never, ever, if you have a race and you blow up, whatever that means for you, <laughs> it's not over. Just back off for a moment, mm -hmm. okay? Take in a drink, take in a, a, you know, a gel, and then boom, you get right back into it, and then you may blow up again. And walk if you have to, like walk in stations. But, but seriously, like I blew up multiple times in almost every single race, but you just back off. It's your body saying, okay, that's a little too hard. Just back off a little bit. Okay, that's all. Yeah. That's and all and we train you to for, for that, guys. We do fart like in the pool. We do like hypostatic. We do like speed work, like, like God, threshold work. But we train you to be able to blow up and come back. Like I've, if you do it in training, you can manage it all the time in training, which you will, especially if you're on our training plan or you have a co one of our coaches. Um, in a race, it's just, it's like, oh, you've yeah, this before. Yeah. I know what this feels like, so. And it's mostly mental, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's mostly mental because physically, your body's just saying, oh, that's a little bit too hard, okay? Back off, okay? But mentally is where we lose because if you blow up mentally and you say, oh, I just blew up physically, so it's over, there goes your whole entire Someone's race. asking what a blow up is. Like, and I don't know if we've explained it by now. Blowing up is like... It feels like you've hit the wall. Like, I, I'm kind of... You can't go on, but you really can. Like, we're... You just have to... The back human up. body is incredible. Yeah. I mean, unless you have, like, where Siri and I a couple of times, you, you're blacking out because you're dehydrated and you literally pass out. We don't mean that. We just mean where your body just goes... Oh, that's a little bit much. And some people have a lot higher threshold than they can recognize it, or they do recognize it earlier, and it's really more of a mental thing. But when you practice it in training, coming back after, say you go out too hard in your first three minute, or you got eight of them, you just back off a little, and you'd be surprised how more you could do. I mean, I used to win races, you guys, by literally taking off out of transition, mm -hmm. going as hard as I could until I blew up. That was the plan. Did you really? And then when I blew up, I'd back <laughs> off and I'd settle into a rhythm that was like not as fast as what I started at, which was like five minute mile pace. It was crazy. I wasn't going to hold that thing. Okay. But I would go to the point where I'm like, okay, that's it. And then it's I back so off. so psychological too, because nobody would have known that, Siri. Uh, no one would have known that's what you're doing. They would have thought, she's going to hold that the whole way. There's no way I can stay I here. just went as hard There's as no I could, could <laughs> until there was no one beside me anymore. And then when there was no one beside me, and hopefully the blow-up came after that, sometimes it didn't, but then I would just back off She and would get go until she couldn't place. feel McKinley Jones's um, braid slapping her in the face anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, Siri thought like she could feel that the whole run, even though she was a minute ahead at World Champs, but she felt like she was still there. So that's yeah. funny. So Danny, um, awesome question. Great question. And Thank you for letting us answer that. Because it's really important. People sometimes understand why aren't you using numbers. We we do use numbers, but it's not what we focus on. Like Siri will know exactly what Rennie's or Ellie's FTP, if you want to call it that. She knows. And she knows like if Ellie's not improving over three months, like okay, what 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 can we change here? Like maybe she needs to max one minute effort to lift that video too. But we know that. I'm exercise science. I know my numbers. We know what it means, but it's not something you want to be focusing on. And some coaches, it doesn't mean that our method is perfect or the only way. There's coaches that don't go by um, perceived death. They're all numbers and heart rate. And that might work for them too, but they're the ones that 
um, you know, that really go real scientific on everything and that's fine, but that's just not what has worked for Serena. And when you don't understand them as well, it's kind of crazy to be focusing that, especially if you don't really understand what they mean. So Yeah, yeah. Ex that's a great point. And also, I mean, me coming off of my bone marrow transplant, you know, I got a heart rate monitor because I thought, oh, this will be able to tell me if I'm doing too much or too little. So I, I sold into that. And, you know, I'd be out on a walk with Beck and we'd be having this <laughs> amazing conversation. 165, I'm like, no. And I'd be like, it's telling me that my heart rate's 165, but how can I even be having this conversation? I'm barely moving. I was moving so slow. So, and that got in my head. And then you start thinking, oh my God, maybe I'm sick or maybe I'm not ready to walk. And all these things came and it's like, that's ridiculous. It was off. It wasn't working. It was it was catching it, my my you, you, cadence yeah. or my rhythm Sometimes rather than that. my heart rate. So unfortunately, and, it, and electrical wires um, like the power lines interfere with it as well. So you, the only time it's really probably accurate is if it's really wet or you have that that conduction stuff and you're wearing a heart rate strap. And they're annoying because they they stop you from breathing. They're under your diaphragm. They're terrible. Yeah. So, so sorry, anyways, we don't mean to. Yeah. We're not bagging Garmin or Apollo or anything. Yeah. Like we say, we, we, sometimes for me, I must admit that it. I do use it sometimes for newbies because I tell them to go out for an easy run, and I'm talking like six out of ten, like no perceived effort, like very very low, just to shuffle, and they can't help themselves. And I see, and I see it, and I'm 165, like, and they're say in their 50s. I'm like, that is way too high for an easy run. Like, were you wearing your heart rate strap? Yes, it was accurate. Okay, so we need to like get rid of the garment so you're not looking at your pace because they're looking at their pace the whole time, I guarantee, and then bring it down to where you can just chat the whole time and they're literally just moving. And sometimes that's what it takes. So. And what I do in that case, Beck, is I'll say, I want a recording of you on this easy run. I want a recording of you singing your favorite <laughs> song. Okay, because if this is as easy as it's meant to be, you should be able to sing your favorite song yep. and I want a recording. Uh, yeah, sure enough, I don't get it. And they're like, yeah, I was going too hard. Okay, so that's a way to not even have to go there at all with the heart rate, but just say, you know, if you can sing, if you can hum, you're going easy enough. And that's great. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Christy, yay! This is our Aussie. Christy's asking, I'm considering doing a sprint triathlon next month. Woohoo! Just the local one. She's one of our serious Yeah, players. I know. Awesome. Just just with the hopes of complete completing it, or would I be better off starting with the entire sprint? Christy, you could totally do the sprint. You could totally do the sprint. I would be starting to do what next month. Okay, so you want to be starting to do a little bit of tri-specific training for sure. Will you fit enough from serious squad to do an hour of cardio easy? And this might take you what, probably and maybe an hour, 15 or something, an hour and a half. So there is no reason why you couldn't do it if you wanted to do it. Um, the entire will be a walk in the park for you because it's really short. It's probably going to take you 40 minutes or so and you're used to doing that. So if you want to push what, out of that comfort zone a little bit, bite off a little more than you can chew, then go for the, the entire, uh, go for the sprint. But in saying that, if you haven't done any tri-specific stuff, and I don't know how much swimming you've done, that might be a little bit. So what's your opinion? I say go for it. You can ah, totally handle do it. Do an Ironman, Chris. Now, yeah. you've absolutely She's ready. She's ready. Do a sprint race. She's a hard ass. My first race was a sprint, and I've <laughs> never felt so alive in my entire life. It okay, amazing. Christy, you're yeah. doing the sprint, and we're going to get you going to the app. Look for the beginner start of season plan and get that started right now. I would recommend that for sure because it just will feel a little bit easier then. So. Yeah. Um, you guys all get those free training plans. Don't forget that, guys. You get free starter season, free end of season, free off season, uh, eight week to ten weeks beginner intermediate events. They're all in there. Just look for them. You get taper plans. You get key workouts. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Let's see. Patrice, with some hope of racing this summer, can we still get training plans as part of our? Yes, you do. You do, Patrice. I just talked about that. Amazing. And you guys, they're all up there as members. I think it's ninety nine dollars for any premium plan, or it might be one ninety nine. I can't really remember. I ask Ash. She's on. But uh, it's usually like $525 for a 16 to 23 week full premium plan. But you guys get it for like, I think it's $199 um, as a member. So 16 and 23 weeks. And um, Patrice, the, uh, the, I think the beginner and the off season starter season for you, Patrice, at your level would be probably not quite enough. So I would go for the, um, yeah, the premium plans for sure. Yeah. And just so you know, guys, I actually posted on the Tri Club page a couple of weeks ago an article on chasing two rabbits and if you haven't read it go find that on the tri club page because it's a great article on once you get a plan 
you've got to just believe in it one million percent follow it to a t there are going to be other people that say why are you doing this you should do that instead why are you doing this you should do that instead and then you like put all these different things together it's like your your kind of recipe and you know show. if you follow the recipe you're going to make this beautiful banana bread but instead you're taking five different recipes and taking ingredients from all these different recipes it's not going to work it's chasing rabbits you'll never catch one okay so so important i would love for you guys to read this article because it's all Can about again trusting in your plan what's it okay called? um uh stay the course or stick to your plan um patrice all right thank you patrice and skylar thank you for okay. reading that somewhere in there. it's so incredibly important and i'll tell you you know i can relate to this just in my you know experience with leukemia like when i had to decide what treatment i was going to have can you imagine if i just tried 10 different treatments from every said you should, this, you should do this you should do this you should do this like i probably wouldn't be here today but i chose a plan that I believed in 1 million percent. I chose to believe in it 1 million percent and I never looked back. Can I say? And I never entertained anything else and that's why I'm here today and I feel so blessed. And we honestly, you guys, like, like everybody wanted to help her and it was so awesome. But um, Amazing. we, we so honestly beautiful. had about 17 different choices. This hospital, go here, fly here and do that. Go here, get your, te get your teeth taken out. Do this, do that, blah, 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 blah. blah and go all holistic go conventional like it was it was a lot and once Sarah had made that decision had that faith in her doctors and made that decision and i was one million percent on board because i knew that she would make the right decision and then it was just all full steam ahead with that decision yeah so. and i'm so blessed and I, and I know that's why i'm here today but you know i remember as an athlete i brett sutton had me doing a lot of big gear work and i would come home to boulder and I'd be climbing up left hand canyon at like 50 cadence because I'm doing my big gear work, building strength, which I believe in 1 million percent. And these cyclists would go by and be like, why are you pushing <laughs> such a big gear? They still do it. And I knew like, because Brett said, gave me the same lesson. You've got to just do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I listen and I kind of smile and wave and say, oh, thanks. I'll do it after you leave. You know, but it was like, mm -hmm. I knew to trust my plan. And I did my thing, okay? People would tell me that I was doing it wrong, but I never questioned it because I was following my plan. I believed in it 1 million percent, and I became a world champion. That's how you get there. Amazing. And it is hard, you guys. And I do think somehow most of the pros that I know of, like we didn't, we managed, as we got more mature as athletes and been around for a little while, we didn't get caught up in that, like, oh, I've got to keep up, or I've got to go with that. It's ego. It's all ego. Um, and you don't want to, you know, be, you don't want to look like you're, I don't know, can't keep up or whatever. So I think sometimes age groups, and you see to have a Kona every year, they just seem to, they can't really help themselves. And men especially, and that's, that's fine. It's their pride. Like they want to go hard all the time. And that's where we talk about that gray zone. Like you're never going to get faster if you're just going constantly trying to go hard all the time because your real hard is not going to be hard and your easy is not easy enough. So you're never going to recover. And I, we always talk about like, you know, going on easy rides. A lot of us would ride by ourselves. Rini wants to ride the road because she doesn't want to go and compete with, say, Ellie or Kaiser or someone racing off the front, like if they're doing a different workout. Like, we always rode on our own on our easy rides. And that was so slow that you would laugh. You'd go, Siri Joe, with her bike, with her doggy in the basket and go past her. Like, literally, it was that slow. So I think there's a really important message here that you got to go hard, hard. You're easy, easy. And most of you should be going easy. I tell them to go with their partners if their partners is a lot slower. I say, go running with your your wife today. Like, take her pace. Oh, no, it's too slow. No, it's not. It's perfect. So I awesome. think it's really important, babe. Yeah, and always know, guys, that ego is driven by fear. Yeah. Fear that you're not going to be enough. enough. Fear that people are going to think that you're not, you know, as good as you are. Fear, 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 fear. Okay? And any decisions made from fear are not necessarily sustainable. So if your ego makes you race week in Kona, Hawaii, absolutely hammering on your easy ride, yeah, it's gonna take away the pain because you'll be like, good, people can see that I'm wrong and I'm fit. But where it's gonna come to haunt you is on this day, when you realize that you left your legs on that easy ride on the Queen K. So be careful with that, okay, guys? Danny's got another great question, and this is, I love it. So, Danny, should we choose a training plan based on hours, 
experience or finish time? How do you define beginner, intermediate, and advanced? So I can answer the second part, Siri, but how do you choose a training plan based on training hours, experience, or finish time? Um, I would do it off of experience, number one. And then if you're having trouble fitting in the number of hours uh, that the training plan has, reach out to one of our coaches. Mm -hmm. and they can help you manage it and tell you, you know, where you can shorten certain sessions or where you can lengthen certain sessions is, if necessary. But I would go off of experience, which you can define beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yeah, so we're, this is funny, you know, and we probably should change the terms on what they're titled. And maybe I can tell my, our, our manager here, um, Ash, about that because when we call it beginner, intermediate, advanced, it doesn't necessarily actually really mean that because it's based on hours. And usually beginners want to, in a sense, because beginners usually want to start off and we don't want to push them too hard. So they're only usually one workout a day. And it's usually no more than an hour weekdays. And then we build up really slowly over the weekends for their long bike and run. So it might start at, say, no more than 45, 50 minutes for their long run. And their long bike might, might only be an hour and a half or something like that, two hours, depending on beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And then the intermediate is usually one to two sessions per day because we're thinking, oh, this person has a bit of experience and they maybe are not full-time work, they have a bit more time. So it's maybe two sessions a day for three days of the week and then the longer weekends are a little longer. So they may have a long ride to start with and an hour long run. And then the advance is always two workouts a day most of the time. So that is really similar to how Siri would train her pros because – yeah. Well, I don't know if our plans ever have three, but um, series, series pros, like, they all do two a day at least. Some, well, your pros, yes, they Always, do do three, yeah. but but I'm trying to say the plans don't – I right. think they ever have three because I don't know anyone who works full-time that can do that. So I would say if you don't have time to do more than an hour a day, it doesn't mean you're a beginner, but I would start with the beginner plan. But if you're thinking, oh, I can fit, like, one to two hours a day, a couple of days a week, and then longer on weekends, yes. And if you're full-on and you're only – honestly, most people who are only part-time workers can fit this in or don't have – by children, I'd go the advanced one. Or if you're single, you go the advanced one. So that's kind of, that makes more sense. Yeah. I didn't mean to say that you were wrong with the plans. I know your athletes do three a day. I know they do four a day sometimes, but we haven't, we haven't written a plan like that yet. Maybe we need to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and again, you get a coach. I mean, they will design the perfect plan for your lifestyle, for your responsibilities, for your work and all according to what your goals are, and then we will design a plan that will give you the best possible chance of achieving your ultimate goal with your lifestyle the way yeah. that and it that's is. Where, so we have three levels of coaching. So we have like the general membership, which you guys are part of, then we have the gold membership. So it sounds like you may probably, Danny, want to look at the gold um, if, if finances are a little bit tight. Platinum coaching starts at like $250 a month and goes right up to $1,500 for um, our top coaches for Siri and I, and then, um, but the gold membership you, for one ninety nine, dollars um, it's $50 a week, you get the plan, but it can be slightly adjusted and you have your own coaching training peaks, one of us, we look at your workouts every single week, make comments on it, make small adjustments, um, it's not fully customized for you, but you get feedback every single week from your coach, and that's a way we've been able to provide that service for people that couldn't afford the coaching so that sounds like something you may want to think about too so awesome so everybody knew about those levels so I wanted to throw them in there um one last question for Nadine is uh, okay whoops oh sorry is it okay to switch workouts throughout the week depending on time available great so question that is an awesome question Nadine and that's where a coach would be great because they can reorganize everything what you don't want to end up doing is reorganizing it so that you have like a hard speed day on Monday and then because you shifted things around, you have another hard day on Tuesday. We have it set up. Every single workout is going to affect the workout uh, that comes after it, okay? So we have it set up in a way that has been proven to bring out the best possible results with all the athletes that we've worked with over the last 25 years. Can you give a quick example? So say, okay. This is so, really important. Like, yeah, back-to-back -back hard workouts, like it's, you don't want to do that. So say Monday is a super hard speed set in the, in the pool, okay? Oh, I hated those. Super hard speed set <laughs> in the pool and followed by strength um, hill reps on the bike, okay? So a strength session. And then Tuesday... We're going to go to the track. We're going to do a really hard run, which is going to be speed threshold work. And the swim will be like an aerobic recovery set. 
and Wednesday would be a long aerobic day, like a three hour ride and a five minute run, but it's totally easy recovery. And Thursday, say you had a hard bike session, time trials, okay, super hard, mm -hmm. but you couldn't fit it in on Thursday. So the you day, decided oh, you oh, wanted to do it Wednesday. on Wednesday. Ow, ow, ow. Your performance on that time trial is going to be severely affected because what I have <laughs> you doing <laughs> after, after the track session on Tuesday, I'm not only helping you recover on that easy swim, but Wednesday, even though it's, you know, three and a half hours of training, it's aerobic recovery. So you're actually flushing the lactic acid out. You're, you're recovering through this aerobic work. So Thursday, you're ready to smash that bike. But if you move it the other way, and that's three hard days then that you're having, and that can have a negative impact on your body. Mm -hmm. So now if you needed to switch, say, a long ride on Saturday and a long run on Sunday, you needed to shift days there, that's more okay. But it's those harder sessions, you just don't want to be stacking them all together. Um, there's a reason why we place things the way they do. So, can I add one thing? Put a question on the on the chat if you ever have a question about your schedule. Yeah, perfectly answered. Um, with the swims too, Siri. Like they're as much as they're fucking hard. Like your body weight supported. So for the swims, um, that's a recovery in a sense. Even if it's really a hard workout, like a, if it's a really hard speed session, maybe so not. But most of the time, swims in a sense can be more of a recovery so even if it looks like a hard workout like the next day and then you switch and add a bike instead of a swim like that again can set you back because you're on your legs like you're doing hard bike hard run or even a long bike and a hard run back up like sometimes it's good to have that swims like to don't miss the swims like make sure you get them in because and a lot of the time usually we will have the swim if you notice if it's a really hard swim we won't have a really hard bike and a hard run on the same day generally it might be some fart leg or some strength but you would do if it's a hard swim, it's always first, and if it's an e, um, if it's a hard bike or run, we usually do the swim second, no matter what. Like usually the hard bike or run is first, so the swim is a recovery. So remember to try and do the swim second, especially if it's a hard um, bike or run, right? Now with the pros, now this is where it's a little different with the pros. I will often do like a hard speed set in the morning, a hard bike midday and a hard run in the afternoon but we stick to the same theme so if it's a speed set for the swim i'll do a speed set for the bike and a speed set for the run so the whole day is themed and then the next day would be recovery but that would you're absolutely right back i only do that with the pros yeah okay so you guys wonderful chat here guys beck is going to stay on a little bit longer if you guys have any more questions but i am so proud of you all for making this commitment to yourself and to be a part of our amazing tribe. So train happy, train healthy, train with energy, train with the best attitude you can bring to it every single day. We love you guys, and thank you for being a and part of And thank you, Clubhouse. Tribe. We're going to jump off Clubhouse and do so. But I'm going to stay on um, our chat, you guys, because we have a couple more questions. Let's have a look here. Um, Annie Lee, Annie Lee, I thank you, too, for making that awesome video. Um, of me yesterday that was so cool that you just mashed that up i love it um so annie's asking what strokes do you need to know i know breaststroke oh just learned here sorry here's your phone just learned freestyle yesterday and swam 100 big milestone oh wow okay annie lee we're gonna get rid of that breaststroke you don't need breaststroke at all i don't really recommend doing that in a race for sure you want to learn freestyle um, so we have a lot of videos on swim stroke and I think we talked about last week too. I actually just posted one on breathing, um, and, um, you know, just tips on swimming. So feel free if you're confident enough to post the video of you swimming, if you get someone to video you, post a video of you swimming and we'll try and critique it while we're, um, while it's on there, we'll try and critique your stroke for you. So, um, definitely can help with that. Um, but I would say you want to stick to freestyle. You want to stick to the big arms, rolling your head to breathe first stroke, open arm entry, um, get that stroke up, look strong, big catch, eyes down. Um, but we can go more into that next time. But um, definitely have a look at our videos at our Instagram on that. And I can even send you, you know, Annie, I'll send you, because you're so awesome doing that video. I'll send you, um, oh, here's your phone right here. I'll send you um, some, some videos on that too. I will totally help you with that for sure. Okie dokie, Karen, I started as pre-beginner because I did not even do the beginner plan. 
I am glad I got Beck to get me started. Thank you, Karen. I'm glad I got you. Um, working with MC has been a game changer. Yay, Skylar. That's so awesome. We love MC. Um, Christy, well done. I'm still learning freestyle. Yep. Yeah, we need to learn freestyle. Christy, if you're in a triathlon woman, we've got to get you into that freestyle. So the best way to practice is start with the breathing, the head down. Um, I'm going to a couple of videos after this for you guys. Um, start with the breathing, head down, then do the arms on the board, and then get rid of the board, and just do the arms, and start with like 25 meters. The biggest thing is just far stroke rate, eyes down, good body position. So have your eyes down at the bottom to keep your feet up. And when you're breathing, you're head down, and then you're just rolling your head to breathe, okay? You're not lifting it up, just rolling it kind of on a, um, I guess, on a skewer or something. So that's my biggest tips for you. As a beginner, would you recommend strength training in addition to the current beginner plan? Um, not in the gym, um, especially if you're new. Everything you want to focus on, if you're really focusing on triathlon, um, gym workouts just going to take away from your time and take away from swim, bike, run. So for you, for, we do it with our pros when they're, they're having that little off season in the winter and stuff. But when it comes to strength for us, we do sports-specific strength. So that's a great question. And when we say sports-specific strength, that means um, band only in the pool, paddles pulled by band in the pool for strength, for strength. Um, on the bike, big gear work on the bike. You'll see some of that in the programs where they're pushing a really big gear, low cadence. That's sport specific strength work. We do it in the time trial bars for people that are doing um, non-drafting. And then um, running, our strength work is on the hills. So I would say that time-wise for you, because I know you, I think you're working two jobs. I remember reading that and you work your butt off. Um, I would definitely um, stick to swim, bike, run because you want to get your sport specific strength in. It's so important, especially as a newbie. And once you get, you know, better at it, some of my athletes there, so Cook and some of my other age groupers add in strength, but they're ones that do two sessions a day and that's always second, um, as in as in doing strength work. So you want to do sport specific strength work for sure. So would honestly, just follow our plan along. But Annie, I think we need to get you on one on one coaching for sure, especially as a newbie. I think like Karen said, it really, really helps. Karen Peterson, freaking rock star. Um, Karen is signed up for a half marathon and also a, I think it's an enticer, Karen, is that right? Um, so Karen, let us know what you've learned um, and how your program's going to to hear that so yay um nadine i'm glad that helped so let's see Karen, because i'm only doing a duathlon using a tri plan what should i do on the swim day good question um i would say karen that you don't want to do you definitely don't want to do back to back run. not a lot of people can get away with that especially us and especially older athletes so i would say if it's um biking and running um if you have done, say, the, let's say the swim was Monday, the run was Tuesday, the bike was Wednesday, um, you could do bike Monday, run Tuesday, bike Wednesday, run Thursday, day off Friday, bike Saturday, run Sunday. So just alternate it like that. So just plan it out, move the sessions. I can totally help you with that. Um, but you definitely don't need to swim. So I, but I'll just make sure that they're not hard workouts. So Monday's bike might be strength bike, and then Tuesday's run might be some sort of a little bit of intervals. Wednesday bike might be um, intervals, or probably more intervals, I would say. Thursday run um, might be some sort of builds or easy, and then Friday off. Saturday would be a longer bike. Always try to do your longer bikes on the weekends because most people have more time, and then long run on Sunday. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, let me know if there's any more questions because I'm going to stay on till six, you guys. We have 10 more minutes at least. Um, yes, I'm going to, Annie, if you don't see my video, I'm definitely going to make sure I post the videos, all my swim videos for you. If Ash has any, she can shove on there too. Um, we have a lot of swim videos, but she's even, even going to caption them for you. But I, I will do that. I will do that. Ash, you don't need to do it. I'll do it for you. Um, that is Siri's dad calling and See what just happened then? That happened to Siri while she was live in front of 80,000 people at UPW talking about her dad and her relationship. How she, you know, he said, please tell me you're not gay. They didn't talk for 10 years. And now they're really close because she called him up a date with Destiny and said, Dad, I want to thank you for allowing me to be the woman I am today. If you told me that I was going to be the most lovely lesbian, amazing lesbian, then I would not be the woman I am. I wouldn't have strived to be to find herself and be an amazing athlete. And she thanked him for hurting him and she said she loved him. And then now they have this amazing relationship and he called her 
just after she started talking about the speech in front of 80,000 people, she's live on Zoom, and the phone rings. And I'm watching it in the other room, and, like, I've got my phone on with Creative Director. I'm like, oh, my God, he's calling her. And I'm going to ring Deuce and say, don't call Siri. Don't call Siri. She's doing a live talk in front of 80,000 people. And I was so scared he was going to call me back to say, what's going on? So he just called. That was so funny. That was quite scary but Siri's just like oh it was my dad and then she got straight back onto what she was talking about I don't know how she didn't get distracted <laughs> okay let's see what do we have here uh any more question fueling during longer triathlons Trisha Robinson so during racing okay a really um quick kind of go-to way to measure I don't like to measure calories because everyone's different so when I was racing 70.3 I would eat at least one gram of carbohydrate per kilo of body weight per hour. That was that kind of a really round number that we use rather than calories, because some people say three to 400 calories, but I like to use the carbs. So I would have, I was 60 kilos then, I'm not that now, I'm a little heavier, <laughs> but I would have 60 grams of carbohydrate an hour. Um, so that's a guide to go by for racing for sure. And then for every gram of carbohydrate that you're taking in, you have to have double the amount in water, fluid, not electrolyte, because electrolytes gonna have carbs in it as well. So you're topping up your carbs too much. I actually thought it was one gram of carbs needs about one gram of water, but Mickey Willen has said to me, it's actually two. So say you have a 20 gram gel, you're gonna need 400 ml of water to go with that. That's a lot of water. That's like a big cup. So think about that, at least have 200 mils with with 20 grams like so um every time you have um a sip of your gel 20 grams you're gonna have to have 200 mils of water to, to bring it down and remember if you're trying to drink it with electrolyte you're getting you know 10 grams more of carbs in it that's 30 grams then you're gonna have to have 300 mils of water at least to 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 um to help it uh, absorb so just remember that and your body holds on to those grams of water as well so just be really cautious of that but i would say that's a really good guide to go by and you definitely want to practice it in training. We don't really ever, most of the time, use as much fuel. Um, we never really go race pace for like those four or five hours in training. But definitely practice your fueling in training because some things just don't work well. I don't like gels at all. They just never really work that well for me. But um, except the high five, the, the really thin ones. And I know now we have FUC and you guys get like 25% off there. So F2C have an amazing carb fuel drink even a carb protein. So I would recommend um, talk to the, those guys as well about what the best is. But I would say, yeah, you can get it in bananas. You can get it in um, the F2C fueling drinks. Um, that's the best one. I always like liquid and a little bit of solid, like a bar or something, like half a bar. Um, I like liquid and solid mix. I didn't have all liquid because I found it would just bounce around in my belly. I liked a little bit of both. I just kind of mix it up. So, all righty, you guys, any more questions? No worry, Trisha, enough water for sure. Yeah, you definitely need the, the water intake. Like, you should be having, on even on a cool day, at least a litre an hour. And on a real hot summer day, like above 80, like, you're going to be wanting to drink a litre of water and a litre of electrolyte every hour when it's above kind of 89 degrees. You're using a lot of liquid. Um, and that electrolyte, again, I'd go for the FD stuff. It's so amazing. It has really high osmolality, so a really high diffusion for your body. So it doesn't sit in, under in this, in, under the skin. It goes straight into your cells. So I would say definitely look into that. Um, all right, you guys, do we have any more questions? We still have five minutes. I think we actually had one on here about tire pressure. Let me have a little look. Um, I think uh, tire pressure, and it's... You know what, I think if Ben Brodschek is on here, I feel like he answered because the thing is now with these tubeless tires and these, it's so different to when I was racing that I don't even know if I'm knowledgeable enough to answer that question. Um, when I used tube, the old tube and, um, and tire, like I went to, in really hot conditions, I would go no more than 110 because obviously the pressure would go up. Um, but in really cold conditions, you could go to 120 PSI. And then... Um, doesn't really change that much in conditions um, like as in wet or whatever but um, bumpy bumpy roads you sort of don't want to go above 110 either you could probably go 120 if it's bumpy but not nothing more than that um, but that's just for your your normal tire and tube for clinches and tubeless I just honestly don't have the knowledge because everything's so new so Ash if you're in here or Ben um, if you know it's something about tire pressure um, write it up because um, yeah there's so much out there now with everything that's going on new with frames and 
into integrated frames and all of that stuff. Like I just, I'm like five years retired. So <laughs> I'm not really up to date with that stuff. So yeah, Ben answered my question to the reply. Oh, I didn't see that. Let's see. I'd like to hear what he said. Let's go up. Let's go up. Oh, I didn't see Ben's answer. Um, so sorry I missed that. Oh, I can't see it on here for some reason, but yeah, PSI, it's important. What Type in what he said because I can't even see that, but that's great. Um, so I'm trying to think of any other announcements. We got sponsored by, as you guys know, Brave Breakfast. Um, Brave Breakfast is an overnight breakfast cereal. It's like porridge. We call it porridge, but it's oatmeal, and it's amazing. I think there's like 70% of it is organic too, but it's um, low GI and it's um, all natural. Um, they are an amazing company, and they, a lot of our athletes have been trying, and they love it. Oh, 2 to 4 PSI. I don't even know. I thought it was, I call it 120 PSI. Why am I saying, why is that, is that wrong? What's 2 to 4 PSI for clincher? I'll go down 2 to 4 for that surface. Yeah. I used to just call 120, 110, 100. I hope that's right. I think it was still PSI, but thank you, Ben. <laughs> And Ben did a great post, you guys. Oh, real quick, um, Rudy Project has just come off some um, testing, and it was uh, individual testing by um, Independent Party, a guy who tests, tests aerodynamics in LA, and he tested the Rudy Project, the new um, Wing TT. Oh, gosh, I need to remember the name of this. I think it was the Wing TT, then it was a Giro, and then it was another helmet. I forget their name, but there was three helmets that they tested. And I was blown away because I know Ben said it's more important than even rider position is number one. Then helmet is actually more more important for efficiency if you're wanting to be the top end of the, the game and you want to save these watts. This showed like for the women between five to 13 watts in your time trial position with an aerodynamic helmet. Obviously, body position is everything. And the guys that were already really aero, they were only getting two to three watts. But the girls who can never quite get as aero as the men, they're like five to 13 watts with a freaking helmet compared to a conventional helmet. And it just blew my mind. Like that's talking like three to 4%. So if you're talking like, you know, like a 40 kilometers, like that's a lot of time. That's like a couple of minutes. So it's like 10 minutes in a, in a 90 K race. That's a lot or maybe six to eight minutes over 90 K. It's a lot of time. So the wing X, yeah, that was it. Yes. Normal 110 to 120 for clinches. Yep. Okay. Where are all the sponsor codes and discounts? Okay, great question, Jeanette. Um, Ash um, can help with that too, but I know that we can't put files on our, I don't know why, but maybe Ash, we can add those to our group um, Facebook group page because we have it on our other serious squad. But the discounts for sponsors are all listed, guys. In your, All of you should have access to Team Serious Tri Club Training Tilt app. And if you go to the website, there's a portal on www.teamseriestriclub.com all you need to do is log in with your name and your password. If you forget, Becky Not will help you. And go to sponsor discounts. There's a drop down. Like there's a little area in there that says sponsors. And there's a little area that says plans and free plans. And every single code is in there. Hyper Ice, 15% off. Normatec, 15% off. F2C, 25% off. Quintana Roo, 25 to 30% off. Rudy Project, uh, 40 to 60% off. Um, Quantum Performance CBD, 25% off. Uh, what else is there? Feedback Sports, SkiCon, uh, Bike Bags. Um, oh gosh, what else is there? There's so many. Brave Breakfast. We have so many amazing sponsors, and they're all listed. Um, and we need to start using that portal more, you guys. Like, it's easy. If you don't have the app, just go to the website and log in there with your name. There's a little section there, which I only just discovered, which is quite embarrassing. But... It's a login with your name and your password. And you can find everything in there, all the free training plans. Every single live chat is in there. There's recipes in there. There's workouts in there. There's all the videos in there. It's all stored. Like our little portal is amazing. It's kind of like the ones that you get at the hospital um, that you log in and get all your details. Like everything is saved in there. Cam, Cam Langsford and Training Tilt is way better than Training Peaks because you can't do any of that in Training Peaks. So. Cole Martin, I'm still on the 70.3 training plan and stick to it, but decide to do an Olympic race, but I'd probably go going to really bad. So Cole, I'm not sure. Rephrase that question for me, because if you're asking if the 70.3 plan isn't going to prepare you for the Olympic, hell yeah, it is. You're going to be so more than ready. Like we're pretty much training you 
like an Olympic athlete doesn't do a lot different to a 70.3 other than um, with the 70.3 plan, you're just doing longer bikes and runs on the weekend. So you're a, you're a million percent ready to go, mate. So let us know when it is, because if you have like a couple of weeks and you've been training for a couple of weeks, I would say you can totally get through an Olympic distance race. Um, if you've been training for three or four months, no worries. If you have some training um, under your belt, like hours of run and you've ridden for a couple of hours or whatever, you can totally get through that. So you totally be prepared. A 70.3 plan is amazing for an Olympic. What I would do is um, I would just add in um, a taper. There's a free taper plan in training tilt. I would add the taper plan in the week before. It's really important that you taper back. And then when you taper you back, um, that's a seven day taper plan or it might be 10 days, but you want to make sure the weekend before um, you just want to cut back on that long run and that long bike a little bit. So when we're racing, even if it's just a fun Olympic race and our key goal is a 70.3 a few weeks down the track, um, you still want to reduce your long ride to like 70% and your long run to about 70%, no more than that. So we do like an hour, hour 15 long run, two to three hour long ride with no efforts, um, just strength work. Um, maybe a few pickups the weekend before and then race week is like a taper um, depending on your goals but you definitely want to taper um, for it a little bit um, just because you don't want to have that fatigue in your legs from the 70.3 plan yeah Cole you're gonna be so set mate let us know if you need help with strategically with training um, training sessions but I would say just whack that taper plan in and you'll be sweet as um, Carrie Preston what is the name of the water holder that attaches the bike with the straw and the tri bars so the aero water bottle, we um, actually, we do have, that is a great reminder for me. Fuel, um, fuel belt do the aero, it's just kind of the aero bottle. Um, there's different types, but the aero bottle between the bars, that does save time. And the good thing for me, what it was, was whether you use the aero bottle or not, it is faster if you're trying to get real aerodynamics. But I'd say if you're kind of a newbie carrier, I wouldn't rent so much. If you just have a regular bottle. Um, you can easily just, honestly, I used to, like a lot of guys to do this, and X-Lab, X-Lab, sorry, X-Lab, it is, X-Lab have um, an amazing, like, it's way too expensive, this carbon fiber thing that sits in the middle of the bars, and then you pull your bottle on, but maybe Ben can show us the man-made ones, like, it's honestly a water bottle holder, get the good one, like, don't get the metal, I would get really thick plastic one, or you could get a metal one, but get a really good quality plastic one, because it's going to bounce a little bit, Get a zip tie through um, both sides and zip tie it between your Like that's what you want. And the good thing about having a bottle at the front um, and then it goes in like that. And you want to make sure the bottle, because it's going to sit that way, that the it's really tight and the lid doesn't have any play in it because it's going to bounce and it's going to be sitting like that, like flat, like that way. It's not going to sit like that in your holder. It's probably going to sit like that. That's where you, how you want it to sit through this way, like forward. And um, zip tie on both sides and then stick it through there and it reminds you to drink. Like I loved it because it reminded me to drink all the time. Having them on the back, I just used to forget half the time. I only ever had my water and my fuel on the back because I would just forget. And I had electrolyte on the middle. This is for the long distance stuff. And then another like drink on the front, like my electrolyte on the front. So I could remind myself to drink all the time. Yep. Torpedo. Yeah, that's one of the ones. Yep. Torpedo. I'm going to reach out to XLab and Fuel Belt because I think we should get discounts for the club. What do you guys reckon? Hey, does anyone you guys want to be sponsored by? Um, still trying to work on, this is the crazy thing. We have 25 videos of people wearing Hoka that we've recommended and they said they're not sponsoring anyone but pros. And I thought, well, that's crazy because the pros barely give a lot of recognition and as it is. And if you have like 30 or 40, 100 of our age groupers, I can guarantee you you're going to get more promotion from Siri and I than you would from your pros. But they're not sponsoring anyone but pros. And I don't know what the ROI is on that, but I think we can change that because we recommend like Hoka to people and because just because they're great shoes. So we're trying to get just a discount. We don't want like, you know, financial bonuses or any like cash incentives. We just want a discount for our athletes. We don't even care about getting free pairs for ourselves. We just want a discount for you guys. So we're really working on that. Um, but I'm going to try and get Fuel Belt and X Lab. I think that's cool. It'd be cool to get a little discount with them. They have worked with us before, but we never pursued it afterwards. So let's do that. Let's do that for sure. Ash, 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 remind me to reach out to X Lab and Fuel Belt. Um, I'm sure they'll definitely give us a discount. All of our photos, our finished photos of every athlete we have are wearing Fuel Belt. So <laughs> they're an awesome company. All right, you guys, I'm going to chime out now. I need to go put some more um, stuff on my arm. It's looking pretty gross. <laughs> 
fell twice in a hoag the only time they've ever fallen. Oh no. Yes. Okay. That is one thing I don't like about some of the bigger, heavy, not heavier, they're light shoes, but the wideness of Hoka, they're not really that great for trail. I don't know if they're a good trail shoe in Hoka, but they're so wide and thick that sometimes you can't find your footing on, say, trails where there's really a lot of rocks. It's hard because you've got such a big surface area on your foot. If you've got a little foot and this big Hoka shoe, you're like almost sometimes with some styles, you feel like a clown. You can't feel your feet. So um, you've got to be careful where you step. So that's the only thing I would say negative about Hoka is that can be hard. I'd get the more version that's not so chunky. Like they go full extreme in some, but I know that they've, they've got some models that actually really, really work. The Cliftons are good. So yeah, I think Fuel Belt Next Lab, we're going to do that for sure. Um, don't break your wrist again, please, Kerry Preston. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm going to go. Um, thank you. We love you all and get some more um, discounts for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, always know we're here for you. Tag us, write to us. Um, I'm going to post some real quick videos of the swim for our, our newbies here. And um, yeah, bike questions, go to Ben Groscheck. He's just amazing. Um, he's always on here too. So thank you, Benny, for all you do too. All right. Hoka Jaws, there you go. Evo Jaws, they're the Karen, there you go. Let's try those ones and they aren't heavy. Love that. Hoka Evo Jaws, recommend. I haven't heard of those ones. Amazing. FQC website, recommend products. So Trisha, it depends what you're wanting. If you, I would definitely um, tag Glenda because Glenda McCowan is on here um, and she answers, well, it's not Glenda McCowan, it's Glenda, I'm trying to think of my life. Look for Glenda. She's on our Facebook group and she has answered so many questions about the products. She will reply to you if you tag her or Greg McCowan on here. Um, they will answer all your fueling questions on F2C because I, I only use, like I have a new curcumin, which is an anti-inflammatory. It's amazing. It's really high anti-inflammatory. We'll, we'll get them on there here next week to talk about the product. It's so awesome. And they have BCAAs coming out that's made from um, beetroot, um, really high branch chain aminos, which is so good for you. They have a whey protein. It's all organic and grass-fed, um, all their, all their uh, dairy and then they have a pea protein. It's pea, uh, God, it's pea, chai seed, um, I'm trying to think what else, flax, I think. And it's uh, all plant-based. And it still has almost the same amount of protein as the whey, which is crazy because I don't want to eat dairy. So I use the, uh, use the, um, the non, I use the vegan one. And it tastes so good. The chocolate and the vanilla, it's not like their typical yucky, powdery, chalky taste. It's, um, I think Christy got some, didn't you, Christy? Or maybe it was, maybe it was Christy that got it. But um, it tastes bloody amazing. So it's really, really good. Yeah, chat with Glenda. She's awesome. Let's get her on. We'll get those guys on next week, you guys, hopefully, and they can chat about it for sure. Because their BCAA is their new curcumin product for inflammation. It blows my mind how, like, their, their quality of their product and the testing that they do I can't believe that they don't sell like they're not like dominating the market. It is unbelievable. Yeah, BCAAs. Yep, exactly. All right, guys. Love you all. See ya. Hey, guys. Ashley here. Hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. If you'd like to watch these episodes in real time, just join our Tri Club team at TeamSeriousTriClub.com.